Hello everyone, Dr. Victoria Skirbo here speaking to you from the Seeds of Transformation Healing Center in Wareham, Massachusetts. It is time to look at the second week of June. That is June 12th through June 17th, 2023. And we have a couple of things, um, important uh, things happening this week. So let's get started. <clears throat> okay, so we start with Sunday, June 11th. Now, there are a lot of things happening uh, on Sunday, a lot of shifts happening. The first one to happen is Pluto ingressing back into Capricorn. Yes, folks, Pluto's little um, walk through Aquarius is over for at least for seven months um, before it goes back into Aquarius in uh, 2020. Or, um, so we're gonna we're gonna look at that a little bit uh, more uh, in in more detail. We also have Mercury make a trine to Pluto at the last degree. Uh, as soon as Pluto moves into Capricorn, um, Mercury trines it from Taurus. Uh, Mercury at, at thirty degrees of Taurus, and then. Immediately after that, it moves into Gemini, which Mercury is very happy to move into. Gemini is the is the sign that um, is one of the signs that Mercury rules, along with Virgo. If you're wondering, um, and so it's powerful in Gemini. However, because it just got out of its retrograde um, period and retrograde shadow at the beginning of this um, this month it's moving very quickly. So it really only spends about two and a half weeks in Gemini, but you can bet that there's gonna be a lot of information coming in those two and a half weeks. And we also have on Sunday, a first quarter square between Venus and Jupiter. This is occurring in the signs of Leo and Taurus, first quarter squares or crisis in action on the seeds planted at the Venus-Jupiter uh, conjunction. And we'll take a look at that uh, as well, we'll look at the conjunction and we'll look at this first quarter square. On Tuesday, the 13th, we have Venus make an in conjunct to Saturn. Um, this is a difficulty seeing what you are actually responsible for uh, in relationships. Consequently, you may take on more responsibilities. So um, usually a Venus in conjunct Saturn has us all feeling a little bit insecure uh, about our abilities or about, to a certain extent, our worthiness. There is um, issues with Saturn. Uh, you know, if you're not working, if you're not doing things, you're not worthy. Um, and really, we're just, we're worthy if we just breathe air because we're alive and we're human. And, uh, you know, we have the ability uh, or the potential anyway to um, express ourselves and, and be a, um, a productive member of society. It's not just about how much you make and you know and all the rest. But we will see, we will feel a little bit insecure this week when that is happening. On Thursday, the 15th, we have Mercury make a first quarter square to Saturn, another crisis in action square. This occurs with Mercury at eight degrees of Gemini and Saturn at eight degrees of Pisces. Now Saturn is pretty much standing still at um at uh, eight degrees of Pisces, because uh, on the 17th, which is the next day, that is a Saturday that things actually are happening, uh, we have um, Saturn stationing retrograde. Before the station, however, we do have a, a sextile between Mercury and Venus. Uh, Mercury and Venus, social connections are being developed. People are becoming closer to one another. So this is a, a Saturday actually is a very good time to um, have a conversation, uh, meet new people, you know, um, extend your circle, your circle, right? Extend your circle, reach out, um, and maybe even talk to different kinds of people so you can get different ideas to sort of expand your, your worldview and your world. Um, and then of course we have the Saturn retrograde, but let's take a look, uh, a little bit closer at some of these, um, these things here. Okay, so let's talk about Pluto. <laughs> let's talk about Pluto. 
So Pluto retrogrades back into Capricorn, where it will be for seven months. Uh, Pluto retrogrades back to 28 degrees of Capricorn, stationing direct on October 10th, 2023. So it's it's retrograde in Aquarius. It moves out of Aquarius into Capricorn, and then it retrogrades all the way back to 28 degrees. And then in October, it starts to move forward again and makes its way towards Aquarius again. Um, Pluto returns to Aquarius on January 22nd of 2024. Um, and Pluto will be in Aquarius for seven months in 2024. So it's not quite done being in Capricorn. Pluto ingresses into Capricorn once more on September 3rd of 2024. Now, this is next year, okay, guys? Um, and Pluto, when Pluto is in Capricorn at that time, it will only be in the last degree of Capricorn. So let's take a look at the degrees via the Sabian symbols here. Um, we have 28 degrees of Capricorn, large Avery, the enjoyment of spiritual values by the soul, able to familiarize itself with their implications. Key word here, clear, clear audience. This is clear hearing. This is hearing the voices of spirit and the many multitudinous voices of spirit without getting confused, uh, being able to, to discern. The interesting thing about <clears throat> this is that this is also the degree of the United States Pluto. So while it's not exact, it doesn't go exactly back to the, to the uh, minutes of the United States Pluto, you feel Pluto on Pluto or Pluto on any planet, definitely within five degrees of an orb and and up to 10 degrees of an orb. But Pluto is pretty subtle, except probably not subtle now because it's in the United States, it's Pluto on Pluto. And we're, we're this is about finding the soul of America. I mean, Biden is not wrong. Biden is not wrong. Um, 29 degrees of Capricorn, a woman reading tea leaves. Um, the ability to see the signature of hidden meaning in every occurrence drawing one's attention. And the key word here is clairvoyance. So we have clear audience, clear hearing, clairvoyance, clear, clear seeing. These last degrees of Capricorn, you almost wouldn't expect this to uh, be the case, but this is the case. These are the symbols. And then the 30th degree of Capricorn, which is where it's going to be, um, where it's going to move into on, to, to, on the 11th, right? Um, a secret meeting of men responsible for executive decisions in world affairs. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, the keynote here is the power to assume responsibility for crucial choices. Arrived at after mature decisions with those who share this power. And the key word here is executive power. This is also the degree that Pluto is going to be in uh, in 2024 from um, September 3rd to November 20th of 2024. What is significant about that period of time is in the middle of that period of time, we have the US elections. So Pluto is gonna be in Capricorn for the US elections, but at the last degree of Capricorn. So, <laughs> woo. All right, let's take a look just at the chart of when it moves into Capricorn. And then there are a couple of other things happening that day we can point out just looking at this chart. Uh, so here we have Pluto move back into Capricorn. This is for the United States chart. This is for the Washington DC. So this is significant for the US for that reason. Thank you for people who don't live in the US to have to look at this. Um, but I do want to point out that the ascendant here and then the sun here at 21 uh, degrees of, um, of um, Gemini, is very close to the North Node of Donald Trump, Uranus, uh, Donald Trump's Uranus and Donald Trump's Sun. 
actually his son is at, I think, 23 of, uh, of um, Gemini. His birthday is the 14th and this is, this is the 11th. So whether we like it or not, I think he's going to be prime, prime focus for this. Now we also have on this day, Mercury trying Pluto. And we can see here, here's Mercury at 2957. Here's Pluto at 2959. It only has to move two more minutes. <clears throat> it doesn't happen. It happens shortly after Pluto moves into Capricorn that it trines, um, excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, Mercury <clears throat> at 30 degrees of <clears throat> Capricorn. And, and we know, um, I mean, Taurus, right? Okay. Um, we also have Mercury ingress into Gemini as soon as it uh, makes the trine to Pluto. The next thing it does is it moves into Gemini. And we also have, we can see here, the Venus first quarter square to Jupiter. Um, here is, where is Venus and Jupiter? Here's Venus at 524. That's six degrees. Well, it, it's actually, what is it? It's going to be 534. This happens a little bit later in the day. <clears throat> so we have Venus in Leo. We have Jupiter in Taurus both fixed signs, fixed fire and fixed earth. So there's tension here, okay? Now we also have to see that this tension that we're experiencing is also part of the nodal picture. Remember that we have had Pluto square the nodes, right? It's still, square, even though it's not, this is a fixed node and that's a fixed node and this is a cardinal, it's within orb and in, Point of fact, the south node and the north node are going to be moving into Aries, north node, Libra, south node, and Pluto is going to be squaring it at that time. And when we have the exact square of Pluto to the nodes, Pluto is in Capricorn, the south node is in Libra, and the north node is in Aries. So it's another sort of cardinal cross, right? When we are cardinal T-square, Actually, when Ju when Pluto went into Capricorn, there was a cardinal T-square that started everything. Remember the Arab Spring? Remember that? Uh, all of that, all that, that was the beginning. That was the beginning. And then we had 2012 through 2015. And then we had, so it's just been the evolutionary energy has been like, right? And of course, Pluto in Capricorn, Capricorn is a cardinal sign. So anytime any planet moves into Capricorn, there's some sort of initiation taking place. Pluto in Capricorn is asking us to become emotionally um, self-reliant. The, the resolution or the, the way that Pluto evolves when it's in a sign is through its polarity point. So the whole time that Pluto has been in Capricorn, the polarity point has been in cancer and we have been asked to be self-reliant, right? To uh, find our own uh, sense of security through our feeling nature. Everybody's feeling everything, right? Well, we're here to feel, to feel is to heal. And now um, when Pluto goes back into Aquarius, the polarity point for Aquarius is Leo. So it's more about self-expression and creativity and, and um, um, generosity of heart, right? And children and, and all the thing and, and fun to a certain extent, wouldn't fun be nice as a, as a, as a different sort of theme? <laughs> because most people, uh, or, well, I'm sure there are lots of people having fun, but for the most part, you look out there and it doesn't look like anybody's having too much fun. But if they are, maybe they're just not letting us know that they're having fun and they want us to think that, you know, everything is dire. So we are afraid because fear is like a food to those who have power. So be aware of that. The less afraid you are, the less power you give them. Okay, so let's take a look. Um, let's continue. Interestingly enough, this particular day when all this happens uh, vibrates to a 24 6, which is the queen of, <clears throat> excuse me, the queen of wands, which is a Leo vibration 
a Leo vibration. And uh, let's see, is anything in Leo? Yeah, Venus is in Leo. Mars is in Leo. Black Moon Lilith is in Leo. Leo is about love. It's about creativity. It's about energy. It's about the eternal flame. It's about the heart, right? In the third house, perhaps speaking from our hearts. Uh, important in this uh, time. So let's take a look at the Venus Jupiter uh, first quarter square as it happens, okay, as it happens at the time that it happens. Again, this is a chart for the US. So thank you, you uh, people who aren't in the US to see this. But here we have Jupiter up here in the fifth, in the <clears throat> ninth house, excuse me, conjunct the North Node. Remember, Jupiter is still in orb of that conjunction to the North Node opposite. Uh, of course, the South Node, square Pluto, square Venus. Here's the square right here. And Venus here is in the 12th house. Um, and the 12th house is the Pisces house. So Venus actually likes being in the 12th house. Um, and I think Venus also likes being in Leo, but for a different reason. <laughs> um, and we have Jupiter here in the ninth house. This actually, this square looks a little like um, what's going on with, um, oh, what's his name? Um, Clarence Thomas. This looks like a Clarence Thomas aspect. <laughs> Too much of a good thing. Uh, the ninth house is the Supreme Court. The twelfth house is hidden enemies, um, things, clandestine things, clandestine relationships. So we might see some, uh, hopefully, exposure of that. But let's take a look at the actual um, what this what this square means. So it's a crisis in action. There's two types of squares we can have: a first quarter square, which has which has the energy of Aries and um, and Cancer. So Aries wants to be, Cancer wants to be secure, emotionally secure. And so what are we building? We're building foundations for our security. And very often those foundations come through our family, right? That's our first security is our family. Uh, <clears throat> this crisis in action is a crisis in actions on seeds planted at the Venus-Jupiter conjunction, which occurred on March 2nd. Um, and it occurred at 13 degrees of Aries. That's when um, Jupiter was in Aries. And the Sabian symbol is an unexploded bomb reveals unsuccessful social protests. An immature evaluation of the possibility of transforming suddenly the status quo. Now this puts me in mind of January 6th. Now remember I said with Pluto going into uh, back into um, um, Capricorn, we had this <clears throat> sun here right on the ascendant, but now it's sitting here in the 10th house, which is the most public house. So <clears throat> there's a lot of public scrutiny of the ex-president. And also, um, Xi Ping is a Gemini, and so is Rudy Giuliani. So we might hear about uh, them as well. <clears throat> Now we have Jupiter at six degrees of Taurus, a cantilevered bridge across a deep gorge, the conquest of separateness through group cooperation. Well, isn't that, wouldn't that be convenient, right? We, we're not separate. We are all one and we can build bridges uh, no matter how deep the divide, right? To bring cooperation, but it's square Venus and Leo. Well, what's that symbol? A conservative old fashioned lady is confronted by a hippie girl. The need to transcend our subservience to fashion in morals as well as in clothes. So this is really about freeing up our um, judgments, right? Our moral, maybe our moral judgments, you know, allowing the new to come in, allowing the new to come in, but in a way, where we're working together instead of working against each other. Okay, so I find this this all very, very interesting. Okay, let's continue here. So here we have on the 15th of June, we have Mercury make its first quarter square to Saturn. <clears throat> Again, first quarter square is a crisis in action. 
to build foundations. And this is part of the synodic cycle that began with the Mercury-Saturn conjunction. Now, Mercury is the, is the planet of the mind. It's the information gatherer. And Saturn is the structure of our consciousness. In order for our consciousness to be structured, we need to have we need the information that Mercury can, can give us. So as we have the conjunction and then Mercury starts to move away from Saturn and then eventually as it does on the 15th, make that first quarter square, um, it's really doing in a way Saturn's bidding, but Mercury is a little bit more like, it's Mercury's job to go out there and get information so we can build foundations. Now, this conjunction occurred on the same day as the Jupiter-Venus conjunction, interestingly enough. And, but it occurred at 30 degrees of Aquarius, the last degree of Aquarius, deeply rooted in the past of a very ancient culture, a spiritual brotherhood in which many individual minds are merged into the glowing light of unanimous consciousness is revealed to one who has emerged successfully from his metamorphosis. So this is really about, um, in a way, the sort of coming of a new age of, or a new person or a new, um, and, and we're all in this together. The thing with Aquarius is it's not like a savior. The energy is not the savior energy. The, the, the energy is the, the power of, the group led by somebody who is upright and moral and cares about the group. And I can only think of really honestly, the person who comes to mind with this energy is Zelensky. Zelensky is this, this type of, at least that's what he portrays himself to be. And certainly he's proved himself to be brave in this situation um, and, and wanting to bring his country forward to be a democracy, uh, no longer under the thumb of, of Russia. So we can see that, um, and, and he does honestly feel to me very much like uh, a soldier of Archangel Michael, a soldier of light or a leader of light. And Kiev's um, um, patron saint is Michael. All right, so now Mercury is at eight degrees of Gemini. So that was the initial conjunction, right? On March 2nd. Um, and March 2nd was right about a year after the start of the war, interestingly enough, because it happened, I think, on the 24th of February, 2022. All right, so now Mercury is at eight degrees of Gemini. Arouse strike, strikers surround a factory. The disruptive power of the ambitious mind upon the organic wholeness of human relationships. This is people deciding they're not taking it anymore, that they're not going to be under the thumb of a ruler who doesn't have their best interest at heart. <coughs> this is the people rising up. Square Saturn at eight degrees of Pisces. And eight degrees of Pisces, we have a girl blowing a bugle. The call, a call to, partic to participation in the service of the race as an evolutionary crisis approaches. We are in an evolutionary crisis, folks. There is no denying that. Pluto is square the nodes, evolutionary crossroads. What are we going to choose? The resolution node for Pluto squaring the nodes here is the south node in Scorpio, letting go, forgiveness. Um, letting go of the need to control in order to become more self-reliant, for us, uh, expanded and earth-centered, earth-centered. So this, this girl blowing the bugle is saying, doo, 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 doo. it is time to wake up folks and we have to start working together. All right. So here is the Saturn station that happens on the 17. It is at eight degrees of Pisces, which is this, um, the a girl blowing a bugle. 
a call to participation in the service of the race as evolutionary crisis approaches. The key words here, tomorrow acts through today. It summons men to rebirth. So this child blowing this horn could just as well be um, Gabriel, right? Gabriel blows the horn in the uh, in the judgment card. What is the vibration of this day? The vibration of this day is a 30 over three, which is actually a Jupiter vibration in the system that I use. So it's about expansion. It's about mercy. It's about uh, goodness. Jupiter is, is a benefic energy. I'm just looking for uh, Gabriel blowing his horn. Oops. <laughs> there you go. Gabriel or the little girl, right? Which one is it? Um, it's time to wake up, guys. All this fighting between us and this is mine and that is yours and you're going to take what I have and what I want is ridiculous. We don't have to do it that way. We don't have to do it that way. The people in power let us think we have to do it that way. They want us to feel like we're enemies, you know, divide and conquer. And so the more we come together on the things that matter most to us, which for the most part is true for everybody, people like to have peace. They like to have food in their bellies. They like to have a roof over their heads. It doesn't have to be a mansion. Mansion is just a bunch of empty rooms that one person owns, right? Like, what's the point? It's so empty, right? Why not fill it with, with, with people? And 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 we learn to to interact with each other and have our time and be who we are. Why are we trying to tell people who they are and who they should and shouldn't be? It's really kind of a waste of time. All right, so that's what's going on this week. And uh, we'll get to these uh, next week. Next week, let me um, stop the share here. All right, so it's going to be, um, I think the second week of June is going to be filled with a lot of information um, and, and things happening. So just um, remember that um, you don't have to let it all in. Um, but the best way to move forward through this time is to be in the present moment, to deal with each thing as it comes to you with the idea that uh, in this moment, we create our future. And so if you're open-hearted and you're loving and you're working towards something, and even if it's something you hate to do, just connect it to something that is important to you, right? I hate doing laundry. I, I actually love laundry, doing laundry. It's one of the few chores I like. But just say that's what it is. I hate doing laundry. If you can connect it to something you want to, you're aspiring to, I'm doing laundry because I'll have nice, clean clothes and all pressed. And so when I go on that job interview, I'll look fresh and 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 I'll feel fresh. And so whatever it takes, however you got to talk yourself into it. That's what you need to do. You need to connect it to something that matters to you, even if it seems like it doesn't matter at the time. How we are in the moment really determines what our future is going to be like. And for somebody like myself, it's taken years to really realize that even though I've heard that said for a long time, you know, I mean, I've been studying metaphysics for over 30 years. And you read it and then you're like, oh, yes, that's what it is. But you have to live it. And so you have to live uh, in the moment that you're in, because that's the only place we really have power anyway. So moment to moment, filled with love and gratitude, even if it, things are crappy, still be grateful for the things that are not. There's always something to be grateful for. Sometimes it's just the air you breathe and that you have a coat. <laughs> So um, that's story morning glories. I'll see you again next week. Have a great week and uh, take care of yourself. Be careful out there. Namaste. Okay.